All right. So um, IRAP is part of the National Research Council of Canada. So what it is is really the federal government's, it's a federal program, and this, NRC is the federal government's R&D arm, if you will. Uh, there, we have a bunch of research institutes or former research institutes across the country that specialized in different areas, nanotechnology, information technology, advanced manufacturing, um, fuel cell institute at one point. Those, so all of those, all these different um, highly developed specialties had uh, research institutes. Uh, and we, they still do, but they're re now reorganized along portfolio lines so that all of those resources are targeting areas that are of, of uh, benefit to Canada economically um, and strategically. So strategic research and development is one of the four business lines. Uh, technical advisory services are available, that means technical testing and also technical advice is available from the NRC Institute people if that's appropriate for your project. That's us in the third position, industrial research assistance program. So our job is to work with small and medium sized firms, which means firms under 500 employees that are incorporated in Canada, doing product development, innovation, research work in order to, as part of their core business function, and, uh, and we try and help them in that process. And we'll talk about how we do that in just a minute. We also, uh, NRC also works on building science infrastructure within Canada. So there may be times when it's not contract R&D for any particular business or a specific application, but it's important work that needs to be done. That knowledge needs to be developed for Canada's benefit. So we have some areas where researchers look, look at those things. Our program um, is a very old program. It's been around since 1946. It started really as a technical information search. Uh, we also provide uh, a number of ways of assisting companies, including um, direct advisory services for both business and technical issues. We provide linkages, and we do provide direct funding for research and development projects. We serve, our program serves 10,000 clients per year. It's actually higher than that, and it's across the country. We fund 3,000 uh, separate clients or companies every year. We have a field staff. Um, this is a bit dated. This is what came out of our communications group in, in the fall, and 250 ITAs. ITA stands for Industrial Technology Advisor. That's what I am. Um, and we're, we're located all across the country, and we serve every geographic area. Every postal code in Canada has access to us. And there's now closer to 300. We're building on getting up to 300. We work with partner organizations like NORCAT. So we've helped NORCAT funding, with funding some of the uh, speakers that you've had at the Innovation Entrepreneurship 101 sessions. And um, we, and of course there's other organizations across the country that, again, always that focus with our program is on small and medium sized firms doing innovation and the support they need to get there. So this is one of the areas that NORCAT works in and we are happy to support them in that role. Our annual budget was $300 million. Last fall, we've gotten a $50 million a year increase in this latest federal budget, so we're up to $350 million. Canada-wide, it actually doesn't uh, go that far. This is a very high in-demand program relative to the amount of funding that we have. So we're very happy to be able to leverage the capacities in both NOHFC and FEDNOR and sort of work with them to try and make sure that companies get the funding packages that they need. because. Our funding is competitive to get, um, and it is uh, it is very it, it is limited. It's it's a, it's a great program. It don't get, I'm not trying to discourage you, but it, it does have we do have there's only so much we can do. So we're very happy to have the other organizations to work with. Uh, we do measure impact on a regular basis. So if you get funding from us, we'll come back to you every year after that for five years and ask you how you doing, and. Uh, and what we're hoping, what we're targeting, is that you're going to come back and you're going to tell us, well, you gave us $100,000 and we're now making $2 million a year off what you funded with $100,000. In other words, we're hoping that for every dollar of project funding we give you, you come back to us and tell us you, you're making $20 a year in revenue more. Our business model is not uh, what you might expect, but although it's not that different uh, from NOHFC and FEDNOR. So we're, not, none of us really are, I can, I can probably close and Eric would agree with me, none of us are straight funding agencies. It's not about, here, fill out this form and get this money. Nobody, nobody works that way. <laughs> so we all want to talk to you. We all want to have a conversation. 
We all want to understand what you're trying to do and understand how what you're doing fits into, uh, into the plans that you have and what your, company, your, cap your capacity as an individual and as a company is and how that's going to work into what you're trying to do going forward. So we're looking for all those things. We're looking at how realistic it is technically and commercially, et cetera, et cetera. And we provide advisory services that provide feedback, not only on, you know, yay or nay, this is a good idea or it's not, but how do we make this better and how do we get you doing even more than you're doing right now or trying to do right now? How do we leverage that capability? Where do we find the technical expertise that's going to help you? Maybe within NRC, maybe within a university, maybe it's a consulting firm or another company. Um, how do we find the business advice that you need? So again, looking at all different sources, NORCAT certainly uh, a good one, and uh, um, yeah, so all, all of and other organizations as well. Our regular project funding works that way. We cover a portion of technical salaries internal for doing the development work. We also cover a portion of contractor fees to support that work. So if you need ex outside expertise, we can cover a portion of those costs. Um, those contractors can be uh, engineering firms, they can be research institutes, they can be uh, really anybody who provided we check to make sure that they're qualified to do what they're proposing to do on your project. Um, we can also fund uh, our regular funding at the smaller levels can fund business expertise as well. So intellectual property, market research, um, all of uh, market strategy, those kinds of things. We c to much more limited funding levels, but we can fund those. And on those small projects, we make sure that you're bringing in some useful expertise. Now, having said that, there's a lot of those things that you can also access through the Opportunity Assessment Program that um, Claude mentioned for NOHFC. Um, there's, some, there's funding through the organizations like NORCAT that uh, FedNOR is putting into place. So all of those tools are useful and at the smaller engagements, I think a lot of those are, are really a great way to go. So, but we do have some direct support where companies can benefit from, from, that, kind of, um, from that kind of help. Um, our, it is non-repayable, um, but we cover a portion of costs. We need to look at the rest of the financial picture Where's the rest of it coming from? You can assume, and, and again, targeted, you, you know the, notes of the costs that I mentioned. I mentioned um, internal direct salaries to do the work internally as well as contractor fees to bring in the expertise, added expertise that you need. Um, we don't, that's, so that's it. It's non-repayable, but it's a, a, a portion of, of the kinds of costs that you're going to look at. So again, that's where the other programs can help leverage and help, help, work us, help this all work together. Okay, to be eligible, a company has to have it be incorporated in Canada, less than 500 employees, um, and we're looking at capacity and a willingness to grow through innovation. Capacity meaning uh, there's the technical and the business capabilities of the people that are within it, as well as the other resources the company has. The willingness to grow. So this is not, you know, you're, you're technical, therefore you're qualified. If you've got your market, you're happy with your revenues, you, you want to keep going where you are, that's great. But we're looking, we're not an entitlement program, we're an investment program. And we talked about our returns that we're looking for in our investment. So we're looking for situations where we can come in and do a project and leverage that company one step further from one big step ahead of where they are right now. So we're looking for those returns. And um, we're not, for example, you probably are aware for R&D funding, there's the uh, SRNED tax credits that are available from CRA federally. Uh, we call them SHRED or Scientific Research and Experimental Development Tax Credits. Those are an entitlement. Those will cover up to 45% of your research costs and you file for them at your year end. And if you incur those costs, you're entitled to your tax credit. But we are not an entitlement program. We're an investment program. We're an inv a one-way investment of taxpayer dollars. You guys are all taxpayers, I bet. You want those mo that money spent well. And we're looking for how to get the best bang for that buck for that money. So we are a competitive process. At the same time, we're, very, we're a very supportive process of the companies that come in. So we, uh, we, we vet things, but we're looking for those companies that are really looking to make a difference in what they've been doing relative to what they've been doing and looking to grow forward. These are some of the companies that have... Um, 
succeeded and we take credit for them. <laughs> okay. So there's Blackberry in there. They did really well for a long time. But uh, all, all these companies are here because this is, comes out of our communication department. These are all very big success stories. And they're here. Um, Mitel is an old com a company that may not be uh, much in the news for people of, of a different, a younger generation than I am. But we still, uh, Wesley Clover, uh, Sir Terry Matthews, who started uh, that whole organization out of Ottawa, uh, still credits, you know, credits a $250,000 uh, pro uh, project uh, that they got funded from us uh, as really being the cornerstone of that whole area. All of these companies do talk about how important our program was to them in early stages. A fellow by the name of Ernie Davidson was really Blackberry was advisory services, very little funding. A fellow uh, ITA, our industrial technology advisor, located at the University of Waterloo, who worked very closely with those guys on advisory and brought them, helped them get going, and they, they still credit him for that. Anyways, that's it, and I'm sorry. <laughs>